Hello everyone, I'm here again with my presentation on the second chapter from the Prose Flamingo and CRT, Lost Spring by Anna Chung. Here we'll be des uh, describing just uh, the second part of that uh, same chapter. First, we have did it in the previous video. And these experts uh, are taken from the Lost Spring stories of stolen childhood. This chapter is divided into two. Today we will be going through the second part of it. First we have already done it. <coughs> the characters of this part is Mukesh. He is a boy belonging to a family of bangle makers in Firozabad. He dreams of breaking away from tradition and becoming a motor mechanic. And the narrator is a social worker who empathizes with slum dwellers and honestly portrays the pitiful lives. I want to drive a car. Mukesh wants to be his own master. Here begins the second story in Firozabad. The author meets Mukesh, who insists on being his own master. He wishes to be a motor mechanic. Author asks him if he knows anything about cars. Mukesh replies that he would learn to drive a car. The author feels that his dream is like a mirage amidst the dusty streets of Firozabad. Every second family in Firozabad is engaged in the business of bangle making. Firozabad is the center of India's glass blowing industry, where generation after generation have been involved in this business. Another un encounter with poverty. The people of Ferozabad involves the children in the bangle making industry without knowing that it is illegal for children to work in the glass furnace with high temperatures, in dingy cells without air and light. If the law is enforced, almost 20,000 children would be out of the hot furnaces where they, were, they are working day and night, often losing their brightness of eyes before they turn adult. Mukesh proudly announces that his house is being rebuilt and volunteers to take the author home. They walk down stinking lanes choked with garbage past houses that are small and dirty construction with wobbly doors and with no windows where families of human and animals coexist in a primitive state. They enter a half-built shack, one part of which is thatched with dead grass and a frail young woman is cooking the evening meal for the whole family. She is the wife of Mukesh's elder brother. Though not much older in years, she has the respect of Abahu. She wails her face when Mukesh's father enters. The God-given lineage. Mukesh's father has toiled hard all his life first as a tailor and then as a bangle maker. Still, the poor fellow has been unable to renovate his house or send his two sons to school. All he could manage to do was to teach them what he knows about the art of bangle making. Mukesh mother, <coughs> sorry, Mukesh grandmother has seen her husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass bangles. She believes in the destiny. Can a God-given lineage be ever broken? She implies, born in the caste of bangle makers, they have seen nothing but bangles, bangles of various colors. The Lost Spring In dark hutments, next to lines of flames of flickering oil lamps, sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers, welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles. Their eyes are more adjusted the dark than to the light outside. They often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults. The author notices a young girl, Savita, in a drab pink dress, sitting beside an elderly woman, helping in making bangles. Her hands move like a machine. Author wonders if she understands the sensitivity of bangles for Indian women. The sad irony will suddenly dawn upon her. She will become a bride like the old woman sitting beside her. In a voice drained of, 
joy. The old lady tells the author that she has not enjoyed even one full meal in her entire lifetime. Daring not a part of growing up. One wonders if Mukesh's father has achieved what many have failed to achieve in their lifetime. He has a roof over his head. The cry of not having money can be heard in every household of Razabad. Nothing has changed over the years. Years of hardship have killed all hopes and dreams. The author asks a group of young men to organize themselves in a cooperative. She learns the horrific truth that even if they get organized, they are taken to jail for doing something illegal and are beaten up. There is no leader among them. The author finds two distinct worlds in Ferozabad. One is the exploited family caught in a vortex of poverty and the stigma of the caste in which they were born. The other is a vicious circle of those who exploit them. The sahukars, the middlemen, the politicians, the lawmakers and policemen and the bureaucrats. These have created such a burden that a child accepts this as naturally as his father did. To do something else would mean to dare and daring is not a part of growing up for them. The author is filled with joy when she finds that Mukesh thinks differently because a ray of hope was there. The boy is filled with hope. His dream of being a motor mechanic is still alive in his eyes. He is willing to dare. Author asks Mukesh if he also dreams of flying a plane. Mukesh replies in a negative. He is content to dream of cars. A few planes fly over Ferozabad. This was a ray of hope for that Mukesh. Here we end up with the chapter. Thank you. I hope you liked it. Meet you soon.